वेलकम टू सुपीरियर प्रॉफिट वीकली मार्केट राउंड अप थर्टी फर्स्ट मार्च टू थाउजेंड एट्टीन आई एम सागर नंदी चीफ एनालिस्ट एंड ट्रेडर एट सुपीरियर प्रॉफिट ए कंपनी बेस्ड इन सिंगापुर आई उल नॉट टेक टाइम टू इंट्रोड्यूस माई सेल्फ इफ यू आर इंटरेस्टेड टू नो मोर अबाउट मी द कंपनी सुपीरियर प्रॉफिट एंड मोर इम्पोर्टेंटली हाउ इट मे हेल्प इन योर ट्रेडिंग You can visit the website superiorprofit.co and click on the about menu. Before we begin, we go through the standard disclaimer. This demonstration is for educational purposes only. It is designed to share information on Superior Profit trading system. The information presented here should only be used by people who are aware of the risk inherent in trading. past performance is no guarantee of future return superior profit is not an investment advisor this session is not for any recommendation of buying or selling stock or any other instrument superior profit will have no liability for any investment decision made by its audience as usual we will look at key commodities that tend to impact related stocks we will look at oil and gold using technical charts when the market goes up or down it tends to take many stocks along with it that's why we always keep an eye on the broad market we assess that using market breadth of nasdaq and nyse as well as using technical charts of the four broad market etfs along with the broad market's strength or weakness we like to also see which industries are strong and which are weak thereby taking longs in the strong industries and shorts in the weak industries we can assess that using q edge industry scorecard and heat map we will carry out the same exercise today along the way we may go through some of the trade idea shared in our traders forum and certainly look for potential trades for the coming week that was the last slide of the presentation we'll now move to live system we start our commodities analysis using oil we are looking at oil etf uso using weekly backdrop chart and daily hop on chart together we call this at a glance template because it helps us identify a low risk trade setup at the right edge of the chart in a few seconds last week oil had gone up strongly however it closed just at the watermark resistance line looking at that i suggested that it was not time to take new long position it was also because there was a bearish headwind at the same level sometime earlier from where price could successfully fall down that suggestion was useful because this week oil didn't go up it slightly came down in the daily chart it came to the value area and made a new low the weekly candle shape and color both are bullish next week if oil goes up in the daily chart and gives us a cyan color candle that may give us a go with flow trend following long trade opportunity we may wait for that what about gold last week gold also had a bullish shape candle on last friday it had a gap up and i had suggested that it was too late to take any long in gold at that point any gold long could be taken on this candle near the open of the day using early range breakout technique that was the time gold opened outside the triangle pattern so we could use the upward momentum to take a very low risk long trade using early range breakout technique by the end of previous week it was too late to take a long trade 
this week gold fell down came near value area and on friday had a somewhat bullish candle in terms of shape the color is still bearish the weekly color is bearish the weekly candle shape is also bearish even if gold starts to go up from here on monday or tuesday it is unlikely that we will have a go with flow long trade setup because the weekly color is still magenta however if that happens if gold starts to go up we may get some long trade opportunity in gold miners right now there is no long trade opportunity in gold etf let's now move to market breadth analysis every week we study market breadth using nasdaq composite index and nyse composite index both using weekly charts as this analysis is using broad composite indices and longer term weekly charts it is to be used for longer term investment decisions not so much for swing trading and certainly not for day trading in the last market round up both NYAC and Nasdaq declined sharply however price for NYAC was right above the memory support line price for Nasdaq was near the memory support line looking at that i had suggested that it was not time to take new short trades i suggested that we should wait to see how monday's market starts moving we see this week both for nyse and nasdaq we have relatively narrow range candles the nasdaq candle is indecisive it has long upper as well as lower tails small body nyse candle shape is somewhat bullish though it also has upper and lower tails interestingly as i thought might happen price for nyse was supported very nicely by the memory support line and for nasdaq where price closed somewhat above memory support last week price actually dropped a little bit in the beginning of this week hit the memory support precisely and then recovered from there this is yet another example where the memory support lines provided effective support and it helped us to not take any short trade at the end of the previous week in terms of internals all the six internals went up that is the new high low advanced decline and up down volume for nasdaq and nyse the recovery in new high lows are muted relative to the recovery in the other four internals advanced decline as well as up down volume recovered much better than the new high lows the two new high lows went up but still closed below zero the other four internals went up and closed reasonably above zero what does it show it shows that the market leading stocks that were taking the market higher in these periods are not going up so much whereas overall broad stocks across many industries and sectors are going up and going up with reasonable volume in summary we may conclude that the indices continue to be in uptrend they will remain in uptrend in the longer term weekly charts unless these memory support lines are broken internals for this week are bullish four internals closed above zero and all six went up 
However, the bullishness is to be taken with caution because the new high lows, which were instrumental in leading the market higher earlier, are becoming less effective right now. If we combine that with the shape of the weekly candles, we may probably say that the market is indecisive right now and it will be safer either to stay away from the market or choose stocks very carefully for both long and short side. Later on, we'll see if the same conclusion is arrived at from sector as well as industry analysis. Before that, let us move to broad market ETFs analysis using technical charts. We are looking at SPY, the S&P 500 ETF using the at a glance template. This week had four trading days and we see that in the daily chart it effectively moved sideways. The weekly candle is very indecisive with long upper as well as lower tails. This is different from the NYSE composite index which had more bullish shape than this candle. The SPY weekly candle is more similar to the NASDAQ composite weekly candle shape which was also having long upper and lower tails with narrow body. The shape of the SPY weekly candle further shows that the market is very indecisive. What about the other ETFs? QQQ also has very indecisive shape candle in the weekly chart. QQQ is probably the only ETF which has heavy activity this week. SPY didn't have that and we'll see that DIA and IWM also didn't have high activity. DIA weekly candle shape is also indecisive. It has a hollow body that is bullish. From open of the week it closed higher. That's why the body is hollow. However, the candle has upper tail and somewhat lower tail also. So the shape overall is indecisive. Last week, DIA closed below the memory support line. That's why the memory support is broken now. And this week, it recovered somewhat and closed just on top of the memory support. The last ETF we study is IWM. Let's have a look at that. IWM, the weekly candle shape is very indecisive again with both upper and lower tails and very narrow body. When we combine the broad market breadth study with the broad market ETF study, we find that almost all the weekly candles are having very indecisive shape. That shows that this is not the best time to start taking new trades. If at all we take trades, we have to be very cautious and align more and more edges in favor of our trades and we'll try to identify those in today's session as well. We can always find some trading opportunities using Q Edge, Q Vital and Q Charts either using top down approach or bottom up approach. In the weekly market roundups we tend to use the top down approach. We start that from broad market that we studied just now next we'll move to sectors industries and fundamental analysis and then technical charts to identify potential trade opportunities let's move to sector analysis every week we study the 11 sectors across three review periods the red bar represents the performance of this week green bar performance of one week prior to the red bar and blue bar performance of two weeks prior to the green bar. Together they constitute four weeks or about one month of performance. Any bar coming to the right of the zero line shows the sector went up. Any bar coming to the left of the zero line indicates the sector went down. 
in recent periods we had seen massive sector flip flop sectors going up one week all of them and immediately in the next week going down and week after that they are going up again the same thing happened this week vigorous sector flip flop is continuing in the previous week all the 11 sectors were down and this week all the sectors went up this again shows that the market is indecisive the same conclusion that we arrived at from the market breadth and market ETF study information technology and financials these sectors were winners of earlier periods now they are starting to lag we observed that in the previous roundup as well all the three best performing sectors were laggards in recent past these are telecom real estate and consumer staples this reversal of relative strength was studied in last market roundup as well last week all the sectors went down that's why the green bars are to the left of zero line this week all the sectors went up all the red bars are to the right of the zero line so we cannot decide on sector strength from week to week performance right now instead we may look at longer period let's say one month over one month period only three sectors are up out of that two are real estate and utility these two sectors were laggards earlier we had discussed their recent strengthening in several previous roundups including that of last week so the leading sectors the earlier leading sectors infotech financials were starting to lag and earlier lagging sectors of real estate and utilities were starting to lead and we could observe that happening in real time using QH and start looking for low risk buy opportunities we already identified such opportunities in real estate in previous roundups one of the stocks were IRT let's have a look at the stock today this is IRT we identified IRT as a potential long based on either this bullish headwind signal or based on the cyan color candle when it broke out of the memory resistance line near open the bullish headwind came right after the drop associated with earnings and then it had a reversal it could be taken as a long trade right at the very bottom or it could be taken as a long trade when price closed above this memory resistance line in either case we could take the long trade long before the media started talking about real estate sector IRT was one of the real estate stocks that we could identify and take at the right time and we have more stocks in this sector that could be potential long we look at them when we study the industries today these are the 10 best performing industries of this way interestingly all the 10 best performing industries were significant decliners between 4% to 9.4% one week ago and this week they are up by between 4.4 to 6.2 percent so these are all very strong industries this week but relative to last week's drop their gains are still muted we can infer two things from that one is of course that the flip-flop is very visible at the industry level as well and the second is though the industries went up they didn't 
on average recovered the loss from the previous week. This shows that this is not a time to start taking many longs, except probably in industries that were languishing for a long time and now strengthening, like those in real estate sector. Over one month period, exactly five of these industries are up and five are down. Among the five up industries, three are in real estate. This also shows that money is coming into real estate industries, the same conclusion that we arrived at from the sector rotation analysis. In residential rates industry, I found this stock. APTS. It is making excellent bases in both weekly and daily charts. Both are supported by memory lines. It pays a high dividend yield of 7%. Fantastic dividend yield. It is optimally valued in Q vital. APTS. S is missing here. APTS may give a buy opportunity if it breaks out of the narrow range in daily chart or makes a false downside breakup. In the hotel and resort rates industry, another real estate industry, I found two stocks INN and PK. Both broke out of memory resistance in daily after finding support at longer term weekly watermark levels. These are also optimally valued, both pays nice dividend and both may be low risk buy opportunities. Out of these two stocks, PK is stronger among the two regarding recent chart pattern as well as longer term price performance. Recent chart pattern, we can observe that from Q charts and longer term price performance we can easily see from Q vital or from the Q stock scorecard. Let's now go to Q edge, look at real estate and few other sectors, drill down into real estate industries, specifically residential rates and hotel and resort rates and look for these stocks APTS, INN and PK and see how they may be giving optimal buy opportunities right now. Very disciplined, very structured and consistent approach to finding stocks right at the time they are starting to go up. QH is the tool we use for top-down analysis, complete top-down analysis starting from sector to industry to stocks fundamentals and peer analysis. Every time we open QH, it analyzes the 11 sectors across 12 monthly review periods and more recently over 10 days, 5 days, 2 days and 1 days, it does the same analysis for more than 170 industries. Let's look at the sector tab. For every review period, it assigns a score and heat map color. 5 days is the primary review period. This is the day's scores that we use to decide long term as well as swing trade entry. We can sort the 5 day scores from smallest to largest that brings the weakest sectors to the top. Let's focus on the 5 days period. We see that information technology that was very strong earlier, cyan color is now starting to turn magenta, that is it is weakening. We can infer that easily from the color coding itself. We may look at the score also, but for most purposes, just looking at the color transition is enough. On the other hand, industries that were weak earlier, like utilities, it was magenta earlier, now nicely turning cyan. Same is true for real estate. We can drill down to the real estate industries by clicking the drill down button. 
that brings all the real estate industries in the industry tab. We can instantly see that other than these two, let's hide them for a moment. All these real estate industries were very clearly weak earlier, magenta color and turning into strength now. Hotel and resort rates and residential rates are two of the strongest real estate industries this week. We could click the drill down button to drill down into these two industries or we could use Q scorecard. Let us use Q scorecard today to demonstrate how we can carry out the similar top down analysis starting from industry to stocks using scorecard. In Q scorecard we cover 2500 stocks now. We are going to search for residential rates. We find a number of stocks. 19 stocks. We have multiple panels here starting with vital statistics to price performance information etc. Using color coding we can instantly see that APTS is the only stock that is optimally valued. We know that from the cyan color for the relative valuation as well as internal valuation score. It immediately catches the eye. From the recent periods growth column we can see that APTS is having nice revenue growth in recent quarters and over one year. For EPS growth for last three quarterly results we see year over year quarterly growth is positive. So this is a stock in an industry that is starting to go up the best performing real estate industry of this week. The stock itself is optimally valued starting to recover its growth and pays a very nice dividend of 7%. Let's look at the stock's charts instantly from the at a glance template it pops up as a promising stock isn't it? Interestingly earlier it dropped sharply and the drop was preceded by a bearish headwind at the very top. As we take this bearish or bullish headwinds very seriously when that bearish headwind had come any long position holder would be cautious and protect profit in existing long position using trailing stock. That would be a very wise decision because the stock dropped a lot. Currently we make our trading decision at the right edge and we see that after this sharp drop it is now supported by multiple weekly memory lines and for 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 weeks it is not able to break below the memory support lines. In the daily we had the last earnings result coming around this time tried to go down but again price was supported. Currently it is inside narrow range in the daily chart bound by resistance memory as well as resistance watermark level at the top and watermark support at the bottom. The stock has very nice fundamentals so we may try to take a long position in one of two different ways. We may wait to see if the price tries to go below the support level here and reverses creating a false downside breakout and take the trade just at the point the false breakout is completed at this price level. The other approach would be to let price break above the narrow range and try to enter probably with a go with flow long trade setup at a local low point. If the industry is strengthening at the same time it would give a trade where 
industry strength, fundamental strength and technical strength all are aligned. So we found two real estate potential longs already. One was in IRT we had identified earlier. Another is APTS. We had more INN and PK. Let's again start from QA, look at scorecard and then look at their charts. Hotel and resort rates is another very strong real estate industry this week, clearly strengthening shown by the transition from magenta color to cyan color in QA. Let's look at Q scorecard and find the stocks in this industry, hotel and resort rates. We have found 18 stocks in hotel and resort rate. From the color coding, we can see instantly several of them are optimally valued because they are cyan color in relative value column. We can sort by the valuation score largest to smallest to get the strongest stocks to the top. We can see PK is one of the optimally valued stocks and INN is another. PK pays a dividend of 6.37%, INN pays a dividend of 5.29%. Pretty good dividend in the current interest rate situation. So here we again have two stocks that are optimally valued, pays nice dividend in an industry that is very strong right now. Let's look at their charts. This is PK using at a glance template. At this point, it tried to go below the watermark support levels, multiple watermark support levels in the weekly chart. And in the very next week, it reversed. Sharp reversal with extreme heavy activity in the weekly chart. The false downside breakout was completed right at this price level, around 24.5. If somebody was keeping an eye on the watermark support level and the false downside breakout, one could take a long trade right at the close of this candle as a bounce long trade setup. At that time, it already had very high activity on the up bar, also very high activity in the very preceding down bar. And it was around 24.50 level, right? Around 24.50. So it broke below the watermark in weekly, that is this price level, immediately reversed. It was a deep watermark in daily and weekly and it was accompanied by heavy activity that met all the requirements of a bounce long trade setup. Bounce trade setup is the only one that doesn't require the candle color to turn neutral or bullish. We are allowed to take a long trade in a red traffic light candle color also. So we could take a long right at the close of this bar. We could book partial profit already at the declining yellow direction line. At the right edge, it gave a cyan color candle two days ago. That time price was still inside the memory resistance line. On Thursday, Thursday was the last trading day of the week, Friday was market close. On Thursday, it broke out of the memory resistance and gave us a possible very low risk long trade opportunity as a go with flow trend following long opportunity. The weekly candle shape and color both are bullish. One could take along either near the open on Thursday or probably at the close of Thursday. Didn't move much but it is clearly bullish in both daily and weekly. The other stock in the same industry was INN. INN had a drop again at the right edge it came to the long term weekly memory support line multiple of them tried to go below them accompanied by heavy activity and this week 
very clearly reversed with a bullish shape as well as bullish color candle. The memory support was around 1280 to 1290. That is around this price level. So when price went up here or even here, it created possible long trade opportunities. The long trade opportunity here would be a bounce long trade opportunity where price reversed with heavy activity from long term deep watermark support. The risk would be very small, stop would be just below recent low. By the time price came here, more than risk distance was covered and a swing trader could book partial profit at least leaving the rest with trailing stop in a way that the entire trade was risk free. Then price came here again to the same deep watermark support level and reversed again. On Wednesday price broke above the memory line. On Thursday it had a very narrow range candle. At the right edge both the weekly and daily are showing bullish patterns. The fundamentals are great, pays high dividend, industry strengthening and a long trade here will have relatively narrow stop. So one could consider taking a trade both in PK and INN for long term investment purpose as well as for swing trade purpose. Between them, which one looks better? Let's look at them side by side. We are looking at PK and INN, both belonging to the same industry, both having strong fundamentals using hop on charts. Which one looks better at the right edge? PK has already created higher low, higher high, and a local low at the right edge. INN couldn't create a higher low. It has a double bottom at a long term watermark support level. It is also bullish but at the right edge in terms of price pattern clearly PK is stronger and as is our common approach if we are taking long we try to take long in the strongest of the stocks. So PK seems to be a better opportunity in that trigger. If we look at price performance over longer term, we will find that PK is a better stock there also. Let us have a look at that. We can find that out from scorecards price performance. Here in Q scorecard, we are seeing the two stocks INN and PK both in hotel and resort rates industry that industry is strengthening now to see their longer term relative price performance we can go to the price performance panel we can see that over one year period pk is up by more than five percent whereas inn is down over six months pk is down slightly about two percent inn is down much more 14%. Over 3 months also PK is doing better. So over longer term price performance wise PK is stronger. And we saw from Q charts at the right edge also PK is better. So we would like to buy PK because we want to buy the strongest stock. If we want to buy both of them that is also fine. But if we want to buy only one, then between them, strength wise, PK is clearly better. Fundamentally, both of them are more or less equally strong. That was our analysis of the best performing industries. And we found several potential longs, APTS, INN and PK. And IRT was another real estate stock that we found earlier. Let's look at the worst performing industries now.
four of the worst performing industries are in energy sector. These are coal and consumable fuels, oil and gas drilling, oil and gas storage and transportation and energy equipment and services. However, many of them recovered scores significantly near the end of the week. So over the entire week, they are worst performers, but their scores, many of their scores improved significantly on Thursday and Wednesday. Therefore, one may avoid looking for bearish trades in them. Instead, one might look for low risk buy opportunity. I found this stock MDR using top down analysis starting from QH McDermott in oil and gas equipment and services industry. It recovered score during last two days. The stock is optimally valued and is having excellent earnings growth in recent quarters. It has a short squeeze potential as well. So there is significant short holdings. If the stock makes a little bit up move, that may lead to shorts covering, which may further fuel the rally. MDR gave a potential bounce long trade setup on this Thursday. That was the last day of the week. Let's look at QH, find this industry, oil and gas equipment and services, drill down from there and find this stock, MDR. In QH, to find the worst performing industries, we can sort over five days, smallest to largest. We see several energy related industries are here, coal and consumable fuel, oil and gas drilling, oil and storage, transportation, energy equipment services, oil and gas equipment services, etc. If we open up the one and two days performance, we'll see many of them except the one related to coal. All the oil related ones in fact recovered significantly over one and two days periods that is over Wednesday and Thursday. Their score turned back cyan and over two days we can see many of them are showing acceleration as seen from the cyan color on the paste columns today, paste today columns. Oil and gas equipment and services is also one of the worst performer over five days but recovered score significantly over five days score was only 11 over two days 141 over one day it is holding that gain in score huge gain in score that caught my attention and I drill down let's look at the stocks of this industry oil and gas equipment and services in Q scorecard we can look for oil and gas equipment and services we see many stocks, 38 stocks. To get the strongest stocks, we can sort by relative value, largest to smallest. The strongest stocks will have cyan color, the strongest in terms of valuation. I found this stock MDR, which has optimal valuation, cyan color in relative value, and very nice growth in recent quarters for earnings. Last three year on year quarterly earnings growth is very good. It's accelerating in fact from 62% to 266 to 400%. And last three quarters revenue growth is also positive. So this is a stock which has optimal valuation with strengthening growth. That is a very nice stock to look for buy opportunities. Let's look at the Q charts. MDR had a sharp drop in recent weeks. It broke below the memory support lines in weekly chart. However, at the right edge, we see that it came to the long term. Watermark support levels tried to go below two of them and then reversed. This week closed above both the watermark support levels with heavy activity that could 
point to accession. The reversal happened around this price level. Let me check the price level. 5.9 5.9 to 6 in daily chart that would be about this price level so the false downside breakout happened in weekly and that happened in daily at this point right at the close of last trading day on wednesday it had heavy activity down day and thursday heavy activity up day from a very long term watermark support level it was a deep watermark level and that made all the conditions of a bounce long trade setup long could be taken just at the close of thursday putting stop just below recent low and partial profit could be booked once at least the risk distance is covered this is again a stock in an industry that accelerated over last two days fundamentals are strong and chart has a very low risk by opportunity we saw that oil was strong last week this week it came to value area and there is a possibility that oil will go up next week if that happens that is even more reason to look for long in mdr but even if oil doesn't go up but this particular industry strengthens that is oil oil services and equipment then we have a potential long opportunity very low risk and a very nice stock in terms of fundamentals healthcare services this is one of the worst performers this week we had a stock diplomat pharmacy dplo that gave a going flow trend following short signal on 21st march that turned out to be a profitable trend dplo was and still is overvalued this is one of the healthcare sector industries we have another healthcare sector industry here that is one of the worst performers that is healthcare facilities and in healthcare facilities this stock ensg ensign gave a go with flow short setup on 22nd march diplomat pharmacy gave the short signal on 21st ensign gave a short signal one day later 22nd march that also turned out to be a profitable trade and like diplomat pharmacy ensign was and still is overvalued these are again two short trades we could take looking at the industry's weakness the overvaluation of the stocks and low risk trade setups on q charts let's look at these two industries drill down to the stocks and then look at their charts healthcare services and facilities these two industries healthcare services and facilities healthcare facilities very clearly they were stronger earlier now both of them are nicely turning weak magenta over five days they are weak and over two days and one day periods they are holding to the weakness in fact over one day they have deceleration again so these two industries are weak and we could start looking for shorts in these two industries let's filter the stocks in stock scorecard healthcare services first and then healthcare facilities these are the stocks in healthcare services from q scorecard and diplomat pharmacy dplo is a stock that is still overvalued and in healthcare facilities ensign ENSG is a stock that is still overvalued. We can instantly know they are overvalued from the magenta color in the relative value column. These two stocks, Ensign and Diplomat Pharmacy, both gave go with flow short trade setups. Let's look at them through Q charts. In the weekly chart, DPLO was bearish for many weeks. 
on this day in the daily chart it gave a magenta color candle where price was going down not only from the magenta and cyan direction lines that is the minimum requirement for taking a short trade go flow trade setup but it was also going down from the yellow direction line it already had lower high weekly was bearish color so we could take a short trade right at the close of this magenta candle put stop just above recent high and by this thursday we already covered more than the risk resistance at least partial profit could be booked let's look at n sign n sign also has bearish shape and bearish color candles for two successive weeks we could take a possible go with flow short trade on this candle that was a very bearish shape candle price tried to go up and reversed the bearish color candle as well we could take a shot right at the close of that day putting stop above the day's high by this thursday it already covered more than risk resistance again partial profit at least could be booked we could take shots in these two stocks in sign and diplomat pharmacy looking at the industry's weakness fundamental overvaluation as well as optimal short setup in q charts every week we look at the accelerating industries also they tend to be best performing industries of subsequent weeks however we always need to dig little bit deeper all the accelerating industries were in fact large decliners between 7.8 to 11.9% one week ago so it is showing flip flop the same flip flop that we saw at sector level and many other industries level as well this flip flop is the reason to be cautious and take longs only in selective stocks looking for value stocks that is optimal valuation stocks which are also showing earnings growth in recent quarters may be a robust way to search for buy opportunities we already saw some stocks in real estate industry where the stocks were value stocks and starting to show earnings growth in brewers industry this is a stock that we discussed earlier also fundamentally strong stock molson coors tap is the ticker symbol it gave a bounce long trade setup on 26th march that has already generated more reward than risk taken in the trade again a bounce long trade setup from a support and it reversed after exertion tap was and is still optimally valued has earnings growth in recent quarters that in fact made the requirements we were starting to look for to be very selective in taking our long trades and again the bounce long setup came at a price level where bullish headwind had appeared earlier in weekly chart that was even more reason to take the long trade confidently let's look at this industry brewers and then drill down to the stock and check its fundamentals and technicals we analyzed tap before also so we knew that it was a fundamentally strong stock in terms of valuation earlier itself and it is not uncommon to see the same stock playing over and over again when it starts to make a reversal from the bottom starts to go up it will come up probably many times as a possible long trade setup sometimes as bounce sometimes as headwind and later on as go with flow long trade setup we saw a go with flow long trade setup in one of the real estate stocks that means it has already reversed from the bottom i think that was pk whereas another real estate stock inn was right at the bottom at the double bottom so it could be taken either as box or bounce long trade in tap tap Molson course we have a bounce long trade again let's 
do the top down analysis for finding the accelerating industries in key wage we can sort over page 5 days largest to smallest we see brewers is one of the accelerating stocks shown by cyan color over page 5 days column in Q scorecard, we see only one stock in previous industry that is TAP tap on course. Very nice valuation, the best possible score. We just need to look at the color, but it happens to have the best possible scores for both relative and internal values. And having nice earnings growth as well as revenue growth in recent quarters. Pays a small dividend. So it is optimally valued showing revenue and earnings growth earnings growth stronger than revenue growth and then it had a bounce long trade setup on q charts let's look at the charts tap had a sharp down move in this area then it displayed a bullish edwin signal during the earnings week tried to come back to the same price level and reversed one week before it was a down candle heavy activity and this week it has an up candle with high activity not very or extreme high but high activity that completed a false downside breakout at a price level where bullish headwind had appeared earlier in daily chart we see that the reversal was also visible there was a heavy activity down day and immediately next day it went up with high activity even the open of this candle was above the watermark level so we could start looking for the long trade near the open of this candle itself and we could certainly take the long trade at the close of the day. That was a sharp drop accompanied with high activity and then reversal that met all the requirements of a bounce long trade setup. And by Thursday it has already given more profit than the risk resistance, so at least partial profit could be booked. As the industry accelerated, there is no reason to exit full position. Partial position may be held with trailing stop in a way that the entire trade is risk free. Bounce setup allows us to catch the very bottom of a stock. And this is again one more example of that. Steel industry is somewhat opposite you may say steel industry was going up strongly and we could short a stock in this industry if a steel few days ago based on the signal of 9th march one week ago the industry was down by 12 percent and this week the industry went up by 3.1 percent with high acceleration the down percentage was of course much bigger than the up percentage of this week but still it went up with high acceleration we had a short trade started from 9th march signal in last week's market roundup i mentioned there was no reason to exit the short trade we could put a trailing stop at the end of this week at thursday's market close we could see that the industry was accelerating so one could handle the existing short trade in two different ways one is to just leave it with the trailing stop we already booked significant profit and even if the trailing stop was hit we would have good profit on remaining position also the other approach could be that because the industry is strengthening just book profit on the remaining position without waiting for trailing stop to be hit if it gets it let's look at q edge how the industry is accelerating and then look at the Q charts. Steel industry is one that was weak earlier in recent periods. Over 5 days it gained score from 6 over 10 days to 124 over 5 days. 
that shows up as acceleration over five days column the second best accelerating industry of this week if we open up the two days and one day scores we see that the strength is increasing the score improved even more from 124 to 173 and holding to that 173 score let's look at q charts we took a short trade based on the signal of this day's candle it had nice profit partial profit could be booked at the yellow direction line then it fell further and last week i mentioned we could apply trailing stop where was the trailing stop as of this week's close as of thursday's market close the trailing stop is at this level our enterprise was here so even if the trailing stop is hit we'll have significant profit in the remaining position partial position was already booked at this level so one could wait to see if it continues to go down and keep on adjusting trailing stop or by looking at the industry's acceleration we could simply book profit in the remaining position it depends on personal style at the right edge if you ask me what is my preference looking at the weekly candles shape let me go back to the Hoffman chart looking at the weekly candles shape a candle with long lower tail and also hollow body and the fact that there was memory support here that was broken but price is hovering around the same level in fact closing above that memory support level and that the industry is accelerating in this case i would probably close my entire remaining position wait for it to pull up recover somewhat and then till down at that time if we have a go with flow trade setup in charts and also industry weakness in key wage, we could look for another short opportunity however it is perfectly all right to continue to hold the remaining position with trailing stop because the trailing stop is already below our initial profit target depends on personal style let's look at the decelerating industries now five of the decelerating industries are in energy sector however all of them recovered scores significantly over last two days this is the same thing that we saw from the worst performing industries as well several of them were in energy sector but they recovered score significantly over wednesday and thursday so it is not a good time to look for shorts in energy sector another industry gold miners is having a similar picture it is one of the decelerating industries in the last roundup we discussed the two miners gold miners newmont and royal gold not range gold rgld is royal gold newmont and royal gold i discussed in the last roundup that at that time they were weak relative to the gold etf gld so i didn't encourage taking any long trade in either of them but that has changed this week both of these stocks pulled back to value area and gave a bullish and flow candle in daily charts let's look at gold mining industry and then look at the two stocks fundamentals and their charts to find the decelerating industries in qa we can sort over page five days column smallest to largest we can see over five days there are many energy sector industries like this one oil and gas exploration production oil and gas consumable fuel energy equipment and services oil and gas equipment services oil and gas drilling here another one oil and gas refining marketing integrated oil and gas many of them are weak over five days they decelerated also over five days we can see from the page five days color magenta color but if we open the two days and one day periods we see all of them all the 
oil related energy industries recovered significantly their scores jumped and that showed up as the acceleration over two days that is why i suggested this is probably not a good time to look for shorts though the five day scores are weak five days showing deceleration over two days many of the oil industries recovered the same is true for gold mining it was starting to strengthen made a dip over five days with deceleration over five days but over two days it gained score considerably that showed up as acceleration over two days so i relooked at the two stocks range gold no not range gold again so look let's look at the gold mining stocks let's drill down to the gold mining stocks using q score card in q score card we find multiple three stocks in gold mining industry in the last market roundup itself i mentioned that none of them has optimal valuation none of them has cyan color over relative valuation score and in fact newmont and range gold both are overvalued magenta color however they have earnings growth in the recent most quarter year over year earnings growth and newmont has better growth so in terms of fundamentals valuation wise they are not strong in terms of growth not fantastic we can see that second quarter and third quarter growth is not that much only the recent quarter growth is significant and more so for newmont so if we wanted to buy in terms of fundamentals we see newmont to be a better choice let's look at their charts has a very bullish shape candle in weekly at the right edge and in daily it is nicely starting to go up last thursday's candle was very bullish in terms of shape and color both that met all the requirements of a go it flow long trade setup what about the other stock newmont newmont also is bullish at the right edge on thursday it gave a cyan color candle already made a higher high however in the weekly it has an indecisive candle if we look at the right edge combine weekly and daily charts then rgld seems stronger than newmont that is in terms of technical analysis though in terms of fundamentals newmont looked slightly better let's look at longer term price performance from q score card because so far we seem to have kind of tie one is better in terms of fundamental that is newmont one is better in terms of technicals that is rgld what about longer term price performance we can know that from the price performance tab in q score card or q vital for real time users over one year we see that royal gold rgld is certainly outperforming newmont by about 6% over 6 month newmont is outperforming rgld 9 month newmont is outperforming rgld so over longer term the picture is mixed over 12 months one is stronger over 9 months 6 months another is stronger we cannot conclude anything from there so we can say both of them are in a tie newmont is slightly better in terms of fundamentals rgld is slightly better in terms of technicals you may consider taking long in either of them that is how we wait for optimal setup last week none of them had optimal setup but that changed this week and we could combine the industry's acceleration the fundamental data and the technical data to identify the opportunity at the right moment we could find these setups using the top down analysis we followed just now they would have also come up in q sonar on thursday so we could use the bottom up analysis as well 
let's summarize last week all the composite indices and broad market ETFs dropped sharply but they were at support that led us to say that it was not the best time to take shots that was effective analysis because this week market didn't fall anymore in fact I was watching market roundup made by some other people and one of them was saying that look for 500 points drop on Monday Dow drop 500 that never happened it always pays to not only look for where we are coming from the sharp drop that happened but also look for what lies ahead if there is a support in multiple instruments at the same time all our broad market instruments it is not easy for the market to drop it may drop but not easy neither were we looking for long trades nor were we looking for short trades we were waiting to see how this week's move happens so we will be safely outside the market the market is very indecisive now all the broad market ETFs weekly candles are indecisive Nasdaq composite weekly candle is also indecisive only candle that is somewhat bullish is NYSC composite weekly candle that is not enough to conclude that the market is bullish the same conclusion is supported by the massive sector level flip-flop and also flip-flop happening in many industries one week going up one week going down not a good time to take directional trades if we at all take some trades we have to be very picky and real estate seems to offer the best opportunities right now of all the longs that we could identify in recent times several of them were in real estate they were pk inn irt some time ago and also another stock uh, apts that we identified this week we could also take long trade in some gold mining stocks Newmont and RGLD. So we can always find low risk long opportunities as we found today. Isn't it fun to use the Q systems to look for trades? I think that is not the difficult part, that is the easy part. Every week we carry out the same exercise. All of you are well qualified, actually over qualified to run Q systems. What remains is to be patient wait for the trade opportunities and take them without second guessing one example was the choice between pk and inn which one would we take both had possible long opportunities however pk was stronger if we are in the market to make money then long trade should be taken in the stronger stock not the one which one is weaker so inn would not be the right choice because bottom catching is not what we are trying to do. We are trying to make money. Sometimes bottom catching also gives good opportunities. But when we have multiple opportunities, we are going to take long in one that is stronger. If we follow that rationally and patiently, there are many opportunities in all the market conditions as we saw just now. That is all that I wanted to share in today's session. Thanks to all of you for joining. I look forward to seeing you in our next session. Have a great weekend and trade profitably.